Hey there guys, it's Tina and I'm back and I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe during this holiday season. If you're also back, welcome back to the I'm Back crew. How are you guys doing? Tell me all about it. But if you're new and maybe you like what you see, please consider subscribing because we have tons of fun here on this channel talking about makeup and all things beauty. And I always kind of lose my breath when I try to say that all in one go. So bear with me, but today I have a fun video in store. So here's what happened, here's what had happened. I was scrolling through Instagram, as you do, as you do, and of course there are these ads floating around, it's the holiday season, sales are abundant, right? I saw this pair of shoes on Saks Fifth, well, Saks Off Fifth Avenue. You know the little outlets that they have for Saks Fifth Avenue? Right, so I saw these cute shoes and it was on sale, so I clicked through and lo and behold, I happen upon their website. And I am navigating, the shoes are cute, but I'm like, let me see what else they have on sale. So I click the sale section. And in that sale section, they also had makeup. So of course, being who I am, I'm going to peruse. I'm gonna see what else is on sale. So I'm going through the makeup section and I noticed Jouer Cosmetics. Jouer? Oh my God, I completely forgot about this brand. And so in my head, I'm thinking, I wanna do a video talking all about the brands that I have forgotten about. I've just completely forgotten them. They're out of my mind. I haven't purchased anything from them in a while, but I used to use them a lot or they were a popular brand back in the day. And now it's just like, poof, they're gone from my memory. So I want to talk all about those brands. I have a list of 10. There may be more. I'm absolutely sure there are more, but I figure 10 is a nice solid number. So if you want to hear all about the 10 brands that I've completely forgotten about, out, then let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so let's start out with the brand that started this whole thing, Jouer Cosmetics. Where have they been? Oh my goodness, do you remember them? They used to be a social media, YouTube, Instagram darling. They used to send out PR to these top influencers. I'm not sure if they did any specific collaborations, but they for sure would send a ton of products to these huge influencers that would speak about their products, right? They were known for their highlighters. That was a big seller for them when we were into like the bright shiny highlighters. Mm, big thing. And one thing I know for sure that I loved from them was this five or six pan palette with foiled eyeshadows. I about died over those eyeshadows. They were so beautiful, so creamy, so foiled. And I made a big fuss about that palette when it debuted because they were so gorgeous. I think they were ahead of their time too because the formula was delicious. I loved it. The last thing I remember purchasing from them is their pressed powder and I was so disappointed. Oh my God, it was dry, it was chalky, it felt nasty and gritty. I was over it. I never purchased another product and since then, I've completely just eliminated them from like my list of brands in my memory that I should check out from time to time. And I feel like they are not available in store. They used to be at Ulta, but now they're out of sight, out of mind. They're online only and it seems they're at Saks or Fifth. So I'm wondering if they've just moved themselves over to those kind of outlet stores, kind of like a TJ Maxx spinoff. Because you know like Nordstrom Rack, which is another outlet store, it's an outlet of Nordstrom, they will have certain makeup products in their store. So is Jouer just a Saks or Fifth brand now? I don't know, y'all tell me, do you remember Jouer Cosmetics? Do you remember when they were all the rage with their lip glosses? Oh, their lip glosses were a big thing. Those shiny lip glosses, ooh child. Lip glosses, highlighters, they were doing it. Let me know if you remember them. All right, next up on my list is Pure Cosmetics. Pure Cosmetics, another brand that I have not purchased from in a while, a while. And the last thing I remember getting from them, they sent this in PR, was their Barbie collection. And I think that was their attempt at getting buzzed about again in the beauty community, but I don't think they did that well. 
and that was before I moved to Florida so that was a couple of years ago they had like a mascara a lip gloss a palette were there lipsticks as well in this beautiful Barbie packaging stunning I did a full video I really loved some of those products they even had like bejeweled brushes stunning collection but that's the last I heard of them I have not purchased from them since they have like a full 100 shade foundation range that no one really talks about except raw beauty christy she used to talk about them a lot didn't she do a collaboration with them as well yeah she did a palette with them didn't she um yeah that palette was okay i think did i even get it i don't remember this is how much they have just disappeared from my mind I don't remember them. Who? What? Why? I just remember that Barbie collection because I still have one of those pink brushes. Where is it? I probably can't even find it in my collection. But it was bejeweled. It has like little diamond embellishment and it had a little bow. It was cute. Very cute. But other than that, I don't remember them. I decluttered the foundation because I couldn't get my perfect shade match. I think I tried their concealer but it was kind of so-so. And other than that, I can't remember any other products. So let me know, do you guys still purchase from Pure Cosmetics? Do you guys remember them? What was their last launch? Now that I'm thinking about it, let me look them up to see what they're going on with. Oh, they did a holiday collection, so they're not completely busted. So yeah, I don't know what's going on with them. Let me look at their products. Best sellers. A pressed powder I think I tried that pressed powder of course the love your selfie foundation that I mentioned oh that cloud cream yes I remember that I did like that cloud cream moisturizer they have a foundation stick the concealer they have some things and some stuffs so <laughs> my niece says that stuffs they have some things and some stuffs um I don't care I don't care so let me know what's going on with you and pure cosmetics if you're in the same space as I am with them all right next up Viseart cosmetics Viseart wow so I have my Viseart grande pro palettes that I emptied out and filled with my Cleona stained glass collection eyeshadows those multi chromes oh, I die but that's the extent of my relationship with Viseart Cosmetics right now. I still have their original palettes, right? Those, how many were in their 12 pan eyeshadow palettes or was it 16? I feel like it was 12 or 16. But those little palettes, you remember them. And then they've launched like mini palettes. They've done the petite fours. They've also done... What is it called? Let me look them up because I'll tell you right now. I've seen them, you know, in passing. I've seen them with new launches, but I've just forgotten about them because I'm just not intrigued. Their color stories have not been that great for me. And I don't even bother talking about them in like shopping block videos because they're so like dull and boring. Yeah, the Anton Du palettes that they did, you know, those purpley palettes, they did like sunset palettes. They're out there, they're still doing their thing and they have dropped prices because they've done mini or petite palettes to kind of offset the larger palettes that were $80. I think when they originally launched it were $80. People were like, who does this brand think they are with these $80 palettes? Like, you're not Tom Ford, what are you doing, right? So I understand why they're doing these smaller palettes at this cheaper price point, but still, I just, I'm not interested. I don't care, but I don't think they're a dying brand because some people really do like their color stories. Like this Petite Shimmers Koi palette. It's cute. Oh, so what they did was, oh, this is, this is good. This is good. So I'm on their website. They did petites of their existing um, pro palettes. So if you wanted to try out the pro palette color stories, just at a less expensive price point, these are $40 and they have sales all the time. So you can probably even get them at a better price point, but these are $40. They have the Editorial Brights, the Koi Palette, the Cool Mats Palette. Mm. All right, plus as I mentioned, those Anton Du Palettes and then the Petite Fours, which are just quads. Those are $25. I know I have a couple in my collection, Ooh, and they have blush duos now. Okay, okay, 
Lazy Art, so they're not a dying brand. I just don't remember them. I don't care. Like, what, who, a uh, who, Vizzy Art, what? I have not purchased from them in years. In years. So let me know, where do you stand with Vizzy Art? All right, next up, you ready? The Bomb Cosmetics. I get emails from them all the time. I'm signed up for their email list and I just never unsubscribed because I want the nostalgia. I want to remember the Bomb Cosmetics, but I have not clicked a single one of those emails. I just automatically delete them because I don't care. <laughs> I don't care because the Bomb who? So back in the day, the Bomb Cosmetics was in Sephora right initially and then they went to Ulta and then they went to Kohl's <laughs> and now I don't know where they are are they online only or are they still at Kohl's you would have to tell me but I know they're launching products every now and then because like I said I get the emails but who is really buying from the bomb anymore? They used to be a hit brand because they would do these cute color stories that were kind of set in the 50s, you would say. Like the designs were fun and they were all named after people. So their Luminizer, which was a big one, their highlighter, their Mary Luminizer. Oh my God. Mary Luminizer, and you see that play on name? So cute. So the Mary Luminizer, it was the highlighter. You had to have it in your collection. In 2016-ish, when the crazy blinding highlighter was like a vibe, that's when they were really hot. And then they did the no orange bronzer or whatever it was called, their bronzer. And they're in these cardboard packaging with the nice, like I said, 50s design. Love that, right? So they did the no orange bronzer. I had that for a while, loved it. And then they had their various palettes. And because their palettes were mostly matte, I love that because no other brand was really doing all matte palettes. And they had these neutral palettes with like a range of matte shades with light shades, medium shades, and then deepening shades. I love them. And I thought their little kitschy approach to their packaging was cute because like one of their new palettes is the mail order special delivery palette. So this one has like a little postcard design that's signed to just in time. Just in time. Isn't that cute? I love their play on names. It's so adorable. They've done such a good job. So, oh my God. The names of the eyeshadows, again, play on names. So like, Kenny Keep Up. Kenny Keep Up. Adorable. So I was really into their vibe. And like I said, I had a few of their palettes that I truly loved. But nowadays, I don't even, I don't even think about them. Again, because they're not in Sephora or Ulta, they're out of sight, out of mind, and I really don't go to the makeup section at Kohl's. And now Kohl's has Sephora in stores, so I don't know what's gonna happen with the bomb. If they're no longer in Kohl's, or if they're at another like offshoot store, like a Nordstrom Rack, I don't know. You guys tell me, have you seen the bomb in a while? And like I said, they're doing new releases, they're new products on their website, so I know they're doing something but I just don't remember them. I don't, mm -mm. not at all. All right, moving on. Oh my God, this is another brand that I loved for so long. Illa Masca. Y'all, you don't understand the love for Illa Masca that I had. And I was so happy when they debuted statewide. So initially they were only available in Europe, right? They're a European pro brand. And then they launched in Sephora in the US. I done lost my mind because I was ordering their products online. They were kind of viral for a minute and I don't even know how or why it happened, but they were it, okay? They had these beautiful single eyeshadows that were colorful and intense because this was at a time when nobody was really doing colorful eyeshadow. Everybody was doing, oh, tame, and Illamasqua was artistic. They did bold, they did bright. They weren't selling palettes at the time, they were selling singles. And then they had these loose pigments as well. And I think maybe that's why they were popular because MAC pigments were popular then. Everybody was trying to get MAC pigments. We had like, 
Who videos, okay, of matte pigment collections. My whole matte pigment collection is back here, but Illamasqua had these little shimmer pots, you know, and people went crazy over them, and so we went crazy over their single eyeshadows as well. And like I said, they came to Sephora in the US. We had them in store. I was not purchasing a lot though, because they were expensive. So I only purchased when they were on sale or there was some kind of deal because they were like $20 a pop for each single eyeshadow and that was a lot back in the day and even now it's a lot so who's buying all of that right but they withdrew from the US a few years ago they went out of Sephora I know they were in Bloomingdale's for a minute because I could still purchase them at Bloomingdale's they were out of Sephora and then they completely withdrew from the US so if you want to purchase them you had to go online and sometimes I can't be bothered okay especially with the shipping the way it is I'm just like it's not worth it the last thing I remember purchasing from them are two highlighters they had these beautiful highlighters they looked stunning and I still have them I think gorgeous like big gelée formula oh so stunning and I also had their colorful palette so they had like an editorial brights palette kind of like a rainbow all matte palette I had picked that up and they also had a neutral palette so I picked those two up but those are the last things that I remember picking up from them and then after that they've been completely off my radar and because they're not again available in store it's out of sight, out of mind. So I wonder what's going on with them. Do you guys know if they're still around? Let's see. Since I'm checking all the other brands, let's check them out. I just wrote my list. I didn't even bother to check it twice. I just wrote my list and went with it. Yeah, they're still available. There's a US website. Why are they having a winter sale of 50% off? That makes me a little bit nervous. Does it make you nervous? Because it makes me nervous. Oh my god. That's not good. So where do you stand with Illamasqua? Do you guys even remember Illamasqua? Because I feel like they were an old school brand. They were like 2016 vibes. Let me know. Let me know. Alright, here's one I know for sure you guys know about. But I don't think you remember them either. Stila. Ha <laughs> ha! Stila, what happened to Stila? Where are they? What are they doing? How are they doing? I feel like they're going the way of Becca. That's what I feel. I'm just feeling like they are going to shut down soon. And when anybody brings up a brand that they don't remember, Stila is usually on the list. And for me, they were one of the first brands that I thought about, right? They had their little hype moment with their liquid lipsticks, their kitten eyeshadow, which people were using as a highlighter. I think they even ended up doing a kitten highlighter. They also had those glitter and glow eyeshadows. Shut your mouth. Those were liquid eyeshadows that were glittery back when everybody was doing glitter. Oh uh, my god. So we did the whole glitter lifestyle. We were doing it, all right? Those were so popular. Then they launched Shimmer and Glow, which was just a shimmery liquid eyeshadow. So instead of being glittery, which they did a whole line with that, all right? And they were so popular. People loved those so much. And they did the Shimmer and Glow spin-off. And then they kind of fizzled out because people weren't using glitter eyeshadows as much. People weren't into the sparkly things as much. We kind of toned our makeup down, especially around 2020. You know what happened, COVID, the whole thing. People just gave up on the glamorous makeup. We were at home, girl. We weren't putting on makeup. So makeup became very subdued and people weren't doing the most. So I think that played a part of it with Stila kind of going down, 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 but also liquid lipsticks. The craze with liquid lipsticks died out when people started doing more gloss and lightweight lipsticks, even bullet lipsticks, and straight away from the liquid matte lipsticks that were budge proof, smudge proof, drying out your lips, right? So those were their hype products. So it made sense that once those products kind of fell off, then Stila would also fall off. And I'm looking through, seeing what they have, 
They still have glitter and glow eyeshadows and their liquid lipsticks. Oh, another thing that was really popular for them was their liquid liner, the Stay All Day. That's a bomb liner. I don't think that has ever fallen off. It's really good. Oh my God, remember this One Step Correct primer? I love that so much. They did the Stay All Day foundation. They have not updated a damn thing. Those graphic liners, their liners, their pencil liners for eyes were always great. Oh, and yeah, these little convertible colors. So they were kind of like the original. Them and MAC, they did the original cream cheek products. Ooh, yes. So, I mean, they're cute, but I haven't bought anything from them in a while. I haven't even checked out their website in a while. So, I don't remember them. Do y'all remember them? I'm ticking my list off. I'm like, who? What? I don't recall, so Stila is definitely one of those brands that I completely forgot about. Alright, this one kind of broke my heart a little bit, but just a little bit, alright? Inglot Cosmetics. I know, Inglot, another brand that was all the rage back in the day. And I'm wondering if those 2016 brands have just had their moment and now they're just like forgotten altogether because Inglot was one of those hype brands. And I remember going to the Inglot store in New York City. It was in Times Square and I couldn't wait to see this store. I had to swatch all the eyeshadows in store and build my palette because they have this freedom system where you can build your own palette. And I think they had, what was it, quads? singles, duos, maybe even trios. They had face products and then they had these large like 40 pen eyeshadow palettes, which do I still have those? I must, I must because I love those palettes so much. Just the design of them. They were just so hardcore and you would fill them with all your eyeshadows because they had tons and tons of eyeshadows. They had shimmers, they had glitters. Well, not glitters, but like shimmery, more chunky eyeshadows. They had mattes and Oh my god, I love them so much. And the last time I purchased from them was when I went to Barcelona. Was it Barcelona or was it Italy? It was either Italy or Barcelona. I think it was Barcelona. And they had a store on the corner down the street from my hotel. And I was just walking by and I saw them and I'm like, oh my god, it's another European based brand. I wonder, is it European or is it Australian? One of those, but I know they have a lot of stores in Europe, right? So I went in store and they had started doing special eyeshadows like multi-chromes and I picked up a few shades and I built like a 10 pan palette and I was so happy because I like to go into the European beauty stores. So I'll go to Sephora and Inglot, those stores and peruse and get myself a little bit of a souvenir. It's my makeup souvenir. And I remember picking that palette up, but this was years ago and that's the last I've heard from them. <laughs> it's the last I've thought of them. I've used their single eyeshadows in like my build a palette videos where I'm, you know, trying to build a palette around a certain theme. And I use them as singles where I'll swatch through them and try to find a shade that I want to add. But other than that, I have not used a lot of their eyeshadows. And to be fair, their eyeshadows are really good. Their matte formula was really good. But I think they've shut down um, most of their stores in the US. Did they have one in Vegas? I think there was one in Vegas as well. If I'm not, yes, there was. Was it Caesars Palace? It was around Vegas in on the Strip. It was one of those hotels, but I have not used them in a while and now that I'm thinking about it I'm like why haven't I used them they had great eyeshadows but I've completely forgotten about them again out of sight out of mind so yeah Inglot definitely one that has been forgotten all right here's one that kind of broke my heart kind of broke my heart because I was so in love with them Violet Voss Ooh, 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 ooh. One of the OG indie brands. They were a, again, social media darling. 
they had these different palettes, these large palettes, and a lot of the larger creators, again, were on their PR list. They really liked Violet Voss, but I wasn't really into them then because I didn't love the oversized palettes. Then they ended up at Sephora, which is when I found them and fell in love with them because they started doing a different format to their eyeshadow palettes. So they did 10 pan smaller palettes and I fell in love. To this day, their Brights palettes, I think they have like a pastel palette, a Brights palette. They did like a, what is it called? Care Bears palette that I really loved. Their Cool Mask palette, I love. So like I fell in love with these 10 pan eyeshadows, but after I think the Care Bears palette, I'm remembering, I just completely forgot about them because they stopped doing those palettes and started doing smaller pans because those 10 pan palettes had these large pans. They started doing smaller pans in these different color story themes that I didn't love. It was kind of like they're doing a miniature version of their larger palettes, which again, I didn't fall in love with. So they kind of fell off my radar after that. I think the last palette that I have from them is that Care Bears and there was another palette released around the same time that was in the same kind of format, similar color story, almost duplicates really. But after that, I haven't thought about them since. So what happened to Violet Voss? I went on the Sephora website, there's still some palettes available, but they're all marked down. So I wonder if they're going to get kicked out of Sephora soon. Which would make sense, but I don't know. I have, I think, well, let me think about this. I've seen them in store, not necessarily recently, but recently enough. Like, you know, on like the end caps where they have these obscure brands that they don't have like a full layout in Sephora, but they'll have like one and two palettes. So I don't know what's going on with them. Have you heard about Violet Voss lately? Violet Voss, an indie brand that went mainstream and then fizzled out. I don't know what's going on with them, but yeah, they were on my list. All right, time for another oldie but goodie. It Cosmetics. Y'all remember It Cosmetics? I'm sure you do because I kind of still have them in the back of my mind, but I completely definitely forgot about them this year. Like, I haven't thought about them once. I know, it's so sad, and I only triggered a memory when I was sorting through my foundations, and I happened upon their CC cream, and I'm like, oh yeah, IT Cosmetics, oh my god. So IT Cosmetics had a moment as well with their CC cream. Remember when CC creams were all the rage? What was that about? Oh my god, so people were getting into sunscreen and taking care of their skin a little bit more, and IT Cosmetics was one of the brands that had a high level SPF CC cream and CC cream came over from Asia I don't know if it's Korean skincare or J Beauty maybe K Beauty or J Beauty but Asian skincare okay they're big on CC creams BB creams remember BB creams oh my god so BB creams were kind of the first step which was like a beauty bomb it was a light tinted product because we went from Tinted moisturizers? Yeah, guys, listen, okay? So we started out with like full coverage foundations. That's all that was on the market pretty much because it was like MAC Studio Fix Foundation, right? And then we started to go to lightweight tinted moisturizers. I know, it's like a big jump, but we went to tinted moisturizers, right? It was a thing you would mix your foundation with moisturizer to get a lighter product. So tinted moisturizers became a big thing and then under the umbrella of tinted moisturizers, we got these BB creams, which were beauty bombs, lightly tinted product, but they had a lot of skincare to them. Again, this is when Asian beauty started hitting the US market. So we had the BB creams and then we did CC creams. <laughs> I know, I think at one point there was a running joke where they were like DD creams and EE creams because it was like BB, CC, <sighs> it was a thing, but IT Cosmetics was known for their CC cream. So it was SPF like 50 UVA, UVB, and people were like, yeah, get this for your sunscreen protection. It's like a whole thing. And it was a heavy coverage, but in a moisturizer form, or like a skincare form, a CC cream, right? And people were like raving about the CC cream because it was beautiful on the skin. So they had a moment with that. 
Then they did eyeshadow palettes. And I know their eyeshadow palettes weren't like ultra, ultra popular, but they were popular for a while. They were like a lighter wash of color on the lids. They were not heavily pigmented. This is around the days of Lorac Pro Palettes. Do y'all remember Lorac? Oh my God, that's the, that's the last brand we're gonna talk about. But Lorac had this full line of Pro Palettes, right? And IT Cosmetics did like a similar layout with the 16 eyeshadow pans and people went mildly nuts about them. <laughs> Not like overly nuts. Then they had their IT Cosmetics mascara and they debuted their IT Cosmetics brushes for Ulta, which is where I really fell in love. They had the Lux brushes. I did like a full video with the Lux brushes and then just their regular brushes. And to this day, I still recommend IT Cosmetics brushes because I think they do beautiful brushes. They're all synthetic vegan. So if you wanted to try out the line, I don't think you can go wrong. Even their CC cream is still good. And they've expanded the range because that's like a big thing that we had a problem with. Like their shade range was trash. And I feel like because of their formulation too, even though they've expanded the range, the shades are still kind of trash because they have this gray cast to them or they go really orange. So they're not like the best brand for foundation ranges, but they did their under eye concealer. That was a big thing, their bye bye under eye. A whole thing, right? Because it was like full on coverage. So they had their moment, okay? There was a time and place, but it ain't now. It, it's not for me. I have not purchased anything from them in a while. And they send me things from time to time. Like I think they sent me a couple of shades of the expanded range for their CC cream. But like, you know, formulas and times have changed and their products now feel a lot heavier and thicker than most of the full coverage foundations on the market that feel really lightweight, right? Lightweight is where it's at now, so I don't know. I haven't thought about them lately. Have you? Where do you stand with IT Cosmetics? Hmm? And with that being said, let's wrap up with the final brand that I just mentioned, Lorac. Lorac Cosmetics. Oh my goodness, Lorac. Had a moment, like I mentioned, with those pro palettes. That's where Lorac really took off. These pro palettes, all the rage. Everybody loved these pro palettes. If you weren't using a pro palette, then what were you doing? Were you even a makeup enthusiast? Like, what, huh? Who are you? Who are you? Could you be a beauty guru? You remember that terminology? That's what beauty content creators were called back in the day. Beauty gurus. Like, what was that about? It was a category that you had to check on YouTube. I know, stupid as hell. But anyway, back in the day, you couldn't be a beauty guru if you didn't have the original Lorac Pro Palette. It was a neutral palette. It was like a different concept because we had a row of matte eyeshadows, right? And then a row of matching shimmer eyeshadows. Easy, right? Think about it. You have the matching matte and shimmer. Ah, uh, yes, and this was around the time of Urban Decay naked palettes when we were doing those long palettes, you know, with the, the 12 or 16 shades. So Lorac kind of capitalized on that love of Urban Decay naked palettes and did their own thing. And they had their own moment in their own right. Those pro palettes, ooh, we couldn't wait, okay, for the next launch. And this was when launches were spaced out. So you kind of have to wait a year or so for the next launch, which, you know what? I prefer that. I can't keep up with these launches every month, every week. I can't. And I think launches are kind of slowing down for a lot of brands. Have you noticed that? Is that just me? Like they're doing seasonal again. And I like that, except for some brands like a ColourPop and a Glamlight. That is just doing too much, way too much. But a lot of brands are kind of doing staggered releases now, which I like. But you used to have to wait like a year, right? So Lorac did the Pro Palette one. It was just Pro Palette at that time. It didn't have a number. But then they released the sequel, Pro Palette 2. People went freaking nuts because Pro Palette 2 was the one with the blue in it, right? <gasps> oh my god, people went crazy. And they followed up with three and four. I think three was like the nudie palette. That's when I was like, cut, cut it out. I don't want this. And they even did their grande palettes where they did 
was it 32 eyeshadows at that point again around the morphe big palette you know craze they did their 32 pen eyeshadow palette and i don't think they anticipated how popular they were gonna be because they did this launch through amazon right before amazon became like a big big thing because now amazon is like people shop so much on amazon that it's kind of not unusual anymore to see makeup brands on amazon remember when house labs tried to do that and nobody bought them so now they rebranded relaunched and debuted in sephora and they're all the rage now anyway that's not here nor there all right Lorac did this grande pro for holiday the 32 pan eyeshadow palette and they launched it on Amazon. Girl, it sold out in the blink of an eye. It was just, it was crazy. This is when products would sell out like this. People would join lines at Mac for the new launches. It was a whole thing. I, I really reminisce this time of the year and I remember how fun it was. It was kind of crazy and nuts, but also fun when we were at the height of collecting makeup. But anyway, they had this Grande Pro. All right, I love telling these stories, by the way, if you haven't noticed. So they had the Grande Pro launch. It was in this red palette. I remember it and it sold out. You couldn't get your hands on it. It was such a disastrous launch, all right? Because people were so mad they didn't have enough stock for everyone to get one. So it never came back. They never restocked, right? But the next year, next holiday, like I said, you had to wait a year between, right? They did the Grande Pro 2 and this time they launched it at Ulta, right? So now they knew it was going to be popular. People were going to buy it and people did. I think Grande 2 was a big hit, but then it kind of fizzled. So we had, like I said, the Pro Palette 3 kind of started fizzling. I think once they got to Pro Palette 4, no one cared anymore. And then they did the Grande one now, the Grande. They did three and four, and I don't even think anybody purchased those. I know four by then, it was just like, no one cares, get over it. And they've since tried to do a revamp of the brand, and I picked up their relaunched Pro Palette. So they're still doing the Pro Palette thing, but they redesigned it. The pans you can now remove, right? They did smaller versions, larger versions, and they kind of tried to revive the brand. They're available at Ulta. But I don't know. I haven't seen them in store at Ulta, but they're definitely online. And I purchased a couple of those palettes and the formula is still good. Like they've kept up with the times. They've done like enough, but I feel like it's not enough to keep up with the constant releases of other brands. Other brands are more hype and they haven't quite been able to get the same hype they did back in the day. I don't think they'll ever get that hype. I don't think any brand will ever get that hype again. That's a moment in time that has come and passed, but maybe, maybe with TikTok being the way it is, with all these viral trends and viral products, maybe we'll have a rejuvenation, like a revitalization of the beauty community, but I just don't think it will ever be like it was in 2016. Like that was an era to be a part of so yeah that wraps it up that's my last brand Lorac and did you know Lorac is for the CEO the founder I don't know if she's the CEO but the founder her name is Carol so she just spelled her name backwards Lorac that's where it's from kind of changes your mind about the whole thing right you're like oh it's Carol <laughs> like okay you know that's like spelling Tina backwards is a nick that's so stupid. Anyway, that's neither here nor there again. Let's wrap it up. Those are all the brands, the 10 brands that I wanted to mention. Like I said, there are other brands, obviously, that I've completely forgotten about, so much so that I didn't even think about them for this video. So I could probably even do a follow-up video with 10 more brands that I've forgotten about. But I wanna hear from you. Are these brands on your mind, on your list? Have you shopped from them lately? Are there other brands that you have completely forgotten about? tell me about it let's have a discussion again it's the end of the year we're doing these reflection videos and i love doing videos where we just chat i absolutely love it so let me know what brands you have forgotten about and until my next video which will be very soon i'll talk to you bye guys